terms of uh, the themes in the poem, uh, there are quite a lot of them because it is a it is quite a lot of uh, quite a big poem in fact. Uh, so the first one uh, that, the, that that it talks about is the battle, uh, not just between Grendel and Beowulf, but the battle between the the evil and the good. And of course, uh, good survives in the end. Good overpowers um, the evil, uh, not once, not twice, but thrice. And uh, the second most important theme in this is uh, religion which is paganism here in, in the poem is paganism and Christianity. There's also the theme about wealth and in the importance of treasure. The theme is the sea which plays a major role in the poem. Another important uh, uh, theme that we have is fate. Uh, of course we can also put this under uh, the theme of religion, under the theme of paganism and Christianity. Uh, which we will look at in detail in a bit. There's, there's also the theme of loyalty and allegiance. And finally, heroism and heroic deeds. Okay, let's discuss uh, uh, the, the uh, amalgamation, the mixture of uh, paganism and Christianity in the poem because it is one of the most important uh, themes that we have in the poem. Now, if you look at the society of the Anglo-Saxons, uh, it was majorly um, a pagan society worshipping multiple gods and goddesses by the Roman Emperor Constantine uh, who uh, issues a proclamation called the Edict of uh, Milan uh, and this decriminalizes uh, Christianity. Well, the idea of this was to promote religious tolerance uh, because uh, Christianity you know, was a sort of a secret religion not practiced out in the open uh, and Christians were subjected to a lot of uh, uh, backlash in the society. Now this led to uh, Christianity spreading to uh, the rest of Europe and uh, to the rest of the world as well. Uh, now the year 597 marks the entry of Roman uh, monk Augustine uh, who uh, was sent in by Pope Gregory to basically convert uh, the Anglo-Saxons into Christianity. Beginning with uh, the King of uh, Kent, a lot of kings convert into Christianity and uh, for quite some time, for quite a few years, Christianity and pagan uh, religions coexist and this is why we see a lot of uh, uh, reflection of the society into the poem. Well another area of uh, the paganism uh, that can be seen here uh, or the mixture of paganism and uh, Christianity is that uh, Grendel's mother who comes in to seek uh, vengeance uh, from the old. Now the, co the concept of uh, vengeance itself is uh, a very um, a, a pagan idea. Uh, however, it, it is mentioned in the poem that uh, she came, she is a descendant of Cain. Cain, of course, uh, appears in the Old Testament. Uh, the, the next important one we have is fate. Now, this is referred to as word, uh, of course, but it is spelled as W-Y-R-D and it is the fate. Now, this idea is used frequently uh, to uh, talk about both paganism and Christianity. The line 34 of the poem is an important one because Beowulf here says, Fate often saves an undoomed man when his courage is good. It talks about how uh, fate is basically uh, the will of God. There's another line where uh, just after a signal of God, the sea becomes still. Now that's another uh, line which, which talks about the, uh, uh, the presence of God or the power or the might of God. Uh, and how it influences uh, the uh, how, how it influences the people. A critic says, and I quote: "It was a period in which the virtues of a heathen heroic age were tempered by the gentleness of the new belief, an age warlike yet Christian. As a good Christian, the poet found himself faced with the task of treating this originally pagan material in a manner acceptable." to the Christian audience. Well, that's it about the poem. All right, now let's look at some of the important terms uh, related to the poem. Uh, the first one is the alliterative verse. Now, it first appeared around the 680 AD. Alliterative verse is when a, a consonant sound is repeated in consecutive words. Now, one of the examples is The second literary term that is important is something called kennings. It is a compound metaphor. Now some of the examples that you have in uh, Beowulf are The next term that is important for us is called litotes. It is in simple words an understatement, negative expression in uh, uh, as an understatement. An example of that is uh, your room is not a complete disaster. So, well, 
Well, there you have it. Uh, that's about the poem. Now let's look at the next section, an important one, and let's figure out uh, who are the most important writers, uh, poets of these times. Uh, of course, like we have discussed already, we do not know who the writer uh, or writers of Beowulf uh, are, but we do have some other writers, um, majorly poetry. Uh, now, this, this, uh, the Old English period was uh, famous for its poetry. Not so much the written uh, words such as the novel or the short story, which came in much later. Novel, in fact, was in the Victorian times. Uh, coming to the different uh, uh, works um, uh, or and the and the writers, different writers of the time. We majorly have four of them. The first important writer of the time is Alden, uh, and uh, his important work is The Lord Virgin Tatis. The next important poet we have of the time is Cadman, and his important work uh, is Cadman's Hymn. Uh, then we have uh, Ken Wolf, uh, and his important works are The Fate of the Apostles and The Dream of the Road. Finally, we have King Alfred. Uh, his important works include The Pastor's Book and uh, several other uh, Latin translations. Well, uh, that's it. Uh, that was uh, the Old English period in brief. We do have a lot of information available. You can read a lot more uh, about the Old English period, the Anglo-Saxons and the poem Beowulf. I will mention the, uh, the, the names of the books that I've used for this video in the description. Please let me know uh, what you felt about the video in the comment section. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel.